if I read a script that I feel like, hold on, I gotta get this out of my face. Okay, if, if I read a, if I read a, when I read a script that I feel like is a story or a role that is something I have to do or I want to be a part of, it's a feeling of like claustrophobia or pressure at first, and like a feeling that I need to be a part of it, and then thinking the, what's the audition process going to be, and and how do I uh, get as close to this goal as possible? Because as we all know, the answer is more often no than it is a yes. But you know, I, I said this to a friend recently, like. Uh, Getting very close to a role or getting a lot of callbacks or being one of the last three but then not getting it, that is not a clear loss. There's a feeling of an overnight switch with some of these films, but what's been an even more gratifying feeling is w working with producers or directors that I've worked with before in the past. And more than anything, more than a one random successful audition, I think just as consistently putting out as much good work as possible in audition form and casting form is a step in the right direction. The first thing I, I look for um, when I'm looking for a job, or hopefully you know I get offered one, but I, I, I look at the script. The script is the first thing, the, the written word, the, the, the characters, if it's a story is character driven, or, or I, I look for strong female characters, obviously, although I have played a man before. In fact, my, my first role was um, playing Noah Claypool, the Undertaker's son in Oliver, so. <laughs> Yeah, I played a lot of different characters, but I always look for the, the, the script to, to move me and, and characters who have a nice arc. They have a beginning, middle, and end. They go through something. They come out the other side. They don't always have to be, you know, um, good characters. They can be evil, you know, whatever. I just, I, if I can find a way to um, relate to them and, and see myself doing, I get excited writing the, I get excited uh, reading the script. If it resonates with me, I jump at it. I don't know. I don't know how to keep things spontaneous and fresh when you're saying them repeatedly. I don't know. Uh, I think you just do it. Um, but it is often tedious. That's the truth of it. That filming is often tedious. Often, when you you do the first take of a scene for for television, the crew will laugh and. You know, if you when you do the rehearsal for the crew, they'll laugh, and if you're a performer like me, you feed off that, and you, and uh, with every take, that diminishes. Yeah, it's one of the things that you just have to learn is is to try and be consistent. It's just a slog. It's just a learnt skill, I suppose, and it is it is difficult because the words start to become meaningless. It's like anything. If you repeat any word over and over again, after a while, it just sounds like you're speaking in tongues and. That's often the case with filming, yeah. So it's just, yeah, it's just a thing, just do it. <laughs> I've had the privilege of working with so many extraordinary talents uh, in big and small ways, but observing older actors who are brilliant at this and how they, how they interact with directors, how they interact with other actors, how they prepare, how they work silently, um, uh, has been hugely influential to me. I love to do a scene 20 different ways, but I can only play and go off in this tangent and that tangent if I'm really confident the director knows exactly what he wants from the scene and knows that he's gonna get that. And, and, and you might get some surprises if you go left and right, but if that makes sense, if, the directors that I most like working with give you a freedom within these boundaries. Kind of like parenting, really, <laughs> uh, because we are kids after all. Um, and then when I'm in rehearsal, I like to collaborate. I like to talk. I like to rehearse. Some directors don't like to rehearse, and I respect that. Um, but I'm open. I talk about my process to them. Uh, I talk about how I'm feeling. I talk about questions I have, uh, even ones that might appear or I'm worried or stupid questions. I will always get them out, because I think the last thing you ever want to have in front of the camera is doubt in any way, shape or form, about the character you're playing, about what your story you're trying to tell, about what you're trying to achieve. What are the things I look for in a part? Um, I'd say I'd like to have some kind of connection with the story of the character. And it doesn't have to be like, oh, that happened to me. But if, uh, if I can somehow draw on something in my life to meet me halfway with that character, then that's great. Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be anything like me, I think. Also, just really good, really good writing 
And I think a part of me does go, am I capable of doing a good job of that part? Because some parts are really brilliantly written, but I'm just, I know that I can't actually, I won't do a good job of that part. So I'll, I'll pass on an, an audition or something like that, yeah. If I could have told myself, it, it, it would be, um, I don't know, I think it's a, it's a lesson that I, I feel like I learned early on, but it's one that I try to keep as personal as possible. I don't think it's exclusive to entertainment and, and to, to filmmaking. I think it's in any uh, collaborative process that it's often not personal. Uh, a negative note, someone uh, being uh, brash in the way they're giving you a note, it's, you're, it's a team effort. So there's, because like I said, you, you want to keep yourself open and, and sensitive when you're working, at least I try to, but you have to, and that, and that can be, this can be not, I feel like, uh, apparent at a young age, but there has to be like professional you, work you, thick skin, um, ready to get whatever note really comes at you, and then there's personal you, which uh, you protect and helps you protect the work you, and I think you keep those things separate, and I, I guess that was, I had a good year in drama high school where I felt like I did a scene poorly a number of times where I felt like I could get over being bad. And yet, before that, I was really like a very, very sensitive um, uh, uh, about performance and notes and, and would take things personally when really, I mean, the whole point and the tension as an actor is, you know, your body, your voice, your physicality is your instrument. And yet, it's not personal. I think the best advice that I could give someone who was starting out is to to study and and um, learn, um, don't be afraid to take different kinds of classes, different different acting um, techniques. Y you never know what's going to work for you. And I found it enormously helpful and also comforting as I was trying to find work to always be in a class. So I was always acting with people and being around people who were struggling and doing the same thing I was. Um, that's what saved me, I think, when I wasn't, wasn't working as constantly taking classes, getting involved in um, theater companies, doing, I did, um, you know, backstage work. I was a stagehand for a while. I did, you know, learning all the different aspects, too. I love, and, you know, for directors, young directors and playwrights, did, they should all take acting classes. They should all know how to act. It's a, it's a very, it's a great skill to have to when you're you know t trying to communicate to actors to know what they have to go through so the best audition advice is and it's really simple and I learned it the hard way and you always um, you think you know them but you don't and this is about lines so learn your lines uh, back to front inside out so that you could actually do them backward really really fast that you can do them um, while you're cooking eggs or someone's talking to you you could just drill them all the way through so that it becomes part of your uh, it's already so far in, in your memory, in your body, that you're no longer thinking about the lines anymore. And even if I think I know the lines, I usually don't know them well enough. And um, my first director, David Thacker, who I, I owe so much, he taught me that. And Anthony Hopkins does it too. Anthony Hopkins, um, when I worked with him, I sat down, I was like, can you tell me all your tips for everything? And he said, um, he does the lines at least 2,000 times each before he does anything. Even if he's doing Transformers or something, he'll just always know the lines inside out. Um, and then you can be, f it takes away half of the anxiety and the nerves back in the room because if you know you know the lines no matter what, even if they're throwing a million things at you, even if someone's looking bored, leaving the room on their phone, they clearly don't, don't feel like you're the right person. If you've got that, you have like an absolute safety blanket that you're already given half a chance. Um, so that's it, uh, prepare, preparation, get someone to test you endlessly, my poor sister <laughs> and housemates. With working with the director, I think, you know, um, the, the, the most important thing is that you have clear communication channels and that you are both working on the same project, you know, and, uh, and, and approaching it in the, in the same way. And that, I think a lot of that can happen before you even start and should happen before you start. And, uh, and obviously in theatre that's an easier process because you'll be working in rehearsals for a long time and so on. And so you'll get a sense of... Um, uh, and, a, and a clarification on the fact, on the, the way that you're sort of approaching the part, but uh, but that's that's crucial, you know. If you you don't want to sort of be in a process of trying to figure that out, um, sort of day to day, you want to have a pretty good sense that you're all approaching the character from the same 
you know, same direction. Sometimes it's very obvious, you know, from the script. You know. But other times it's a little more complicated. It's, it's important to find, to find ways of communicating that are quite clear. I'm big on prep. I'll do anything I can do. I'll go over the lines a hundred times, then I'll read around the character. Then if it's like a story that was in real life, I'll do as much research as I can. I'll watch interviews, and if it's like based on a family, I'll look at the family and try and see how much I, I can find. Um, even, even if it's just looking at uh, someone's body movements when they're having a real moment of truth, and I'll try and like uh, replicate that um, and put it somewhere. If it's a really long shoot, you can't really do that for every single scene. I'm kind of now okay with going, just learn the lines and go in and then you're working with a director that's going to collaborate with you and it's going to end up 100 miles from wherever you prepare anyway. So I'll just come with the lines down, but ready to, you know, be fluid about what ends up on, on the screen. For me, I look for female characters that I haven't seen before, that I don't see enough of, that feel like the women I know and love, which is rarer than you'd think. Um, that's, that's what I look for in a script. Great director attached, great writers. The one thing that I did correctly was I just tried to get better at it and I just enjoyed the process. So I watched movies, I'd go read things, I would take different types of classes. I took improv as well as, you know, um, acting classes. So I, I just challenged myself. And so I think by growing and the focus, trying to do the best you can to get better, is the best thing you can ultimately do to give yourself the confidence and maybe in some way create opportunities. Um, I would not be as results driven, meaning we all want those results or those things, but sometimes just doing the best you can kind of is the right approach to that. Um, and being okay to fail and being okay to take chances, I and mean, that's sort of the, of anything in life, right? Get, get Put yourself out of there, out, out there, and, and hopefully, you know, go in to any role in performance, you know, really prepared to make it fun. You know, go in there, do what you need to do to make sure that you're really ready. Um, use any fears and doubts to sort of prepare. And then there's a weird, you know, balance in that where you don't want to be so overprepared that you're burnt out. So you have to find that zone. And then at the best, it's collaborative. So the fun is supporting each other and, um, you know, being there for somebody and making a difference in those kinds of ways is, you know, in, in theater you have that so often, and in films you do too, but realizing that it's not a singular sport, you know, it's, it's not a competition, it's ultimately very much so, it's a collaborative medium. Uh, I think uh, honesty and being as open a book as possible, I think that was the biggest takeaway from uh, the drama high school I went to for me was uh, keep your heart on your sleeve as an actor. That's your instrument. Your ability to make yourself an open wound is what will communicate to the audience and hopefully serve as a therapeutic device for people experience something, experiencing something similar to the story. I think that's true of Call Me By Your Name and we just did the interview with Daniel Kaluuya and I think that's true of Get Out as well. Um, as it relates to working more professionally and outside of a, a academically dramatic environment, I think it's adaptability. That's like the strongest suit you can have as an actor. I genuinely like to be friendly with everyone. In the Australian film industry, everyone talks to everyone and if they're not making fun of you, then they really don't like you. So there's a problem. And I also, when I first went to America, I noticed there was an unspoken, and it's not people tell stories of don't look this actor in the eye and all that. I've never heard that before, but there is a, a slightly unwritten rule of leave the actor alone, let them do their thing. It could be about process, it could be because their style, I'm not sure. And I always try, literally on the first day to break that down because I feel self-conscious in that environment. I'd much prefer a grip to, you know, making fun of me than calling me Mr. Jackman and then saying nothing until they say, thank you, for, it's been great working with you. You know, I much prefer to feel we're in it together.